Amen. Amen. They that said thy word is a lamp unto thy feet and a light unto thy pathway. And in the refrigerator, baby boy. Amen. We are just glad to be in the service just one more time. I heard your testimonies. There's some testimonies in the building today. And when we listen to the testimonies of the righteous, it helps us get through our storm. And you've got to know that it's not easy to stand up here and talk about what you're going through. And some of us want to keep it to ourselves. But you better let somebody know what God has done for you. You better let somebody know how the Lord has made a way for you. Because as I always like to say, your valley experience is your mountaintop testimony. Amen? Amen. Amen. We're going to preach today from Mark's Gospel, the fifth chapter, the 24th through the 34th verses. Mark's Gospel, Mark's New Testament Gospel, the fifth chapter, verses 24 through 34. When you have it, please rest on your feet in reverence to the Word of God. Right behind Matthew. Right in front of Luke. Thank you. I can tell you to get one for yourself. Mark's Gospel, the fifth chapter, 24th for the, through the 34th verse. And Jesus went with him. And much people followed him and thronged him. And a certain woman, All right. which had an issue of blood 12 years, and had suffered many things of many physicians, and had spent all that she had and was nothing better, but rather grew worse. When she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched the hem of his garments. For she said, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be made whole. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned about in the press and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude thronging thee, and sayest thou who touched me? And he looked around about to see her that had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knoweth what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy play. You may take your seat in the presence of the Lord. Heavenly Father, I just ask you to anoint this word right now. Somebody right now is in need of a word from the Lord. Somebody right now is in need of a blessing from you. Somebody right now is in need of healing. So, Lord, I ask you right now to minimize me and maximize you that the people may see the message that you have for them. We thank you and we ask you to let thy will be done. In your precious and holy name we pray. And the children of God said amen. 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 And I just could talk to you for a second from this title. Sick, separated, and broke. But I'm still looking for my miracle. Sick, separated, and broke. But I'm 
still looking for my miracle. My brothers and sisters, many of us are out here searching for something right now. Many of us are searching for that special thing that we believe will make us whole. Some of us are searching for love. Some of us are searching for money. Some of us are searching for healing. Some of us are searching for peace. But when we look around, all of us in one way or the other are looking for a solution to a problem. Am I right about that this morning? And, 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 and let me just break it down. Some of us don't just have one problem. Am I right about that? Some of us have not just one, but two, but three, but four. Some of us have so many that all we can say is all we're doing is looking for a miracle. Am I right about that? Some of us are just looking for a miracle this morning. And we look all over the place to find a solution to our problems. We look to family and friends to find a solution to our problem. We look on television at the judge shows or at the counseling shows to find a solution for a problem. We've spent our money here and there trying to find a solution for the problem. Amen. We face the abandonment when we go to friends and family for a solution. When they look to us and say, ain't nothing I can do for you, I got my own problems. So we look everywhere to find a solution. We've even gone to attorneys and doctors and sat in counsel with them to try to find a solution to our problem. But if we would have only set up a consultation meeting with Dr. Jesus, if we would have only set up a meeting with the man that turned water into wine, if we would have only set up a meeting with the man that had the power to cast out demons, if we would have only set up a doctor's appointment with the man that healed the sick, if we would have only set up a meeting with the one that took a few fish and some bread and fed 5,000, we would know that our miracle wasn't all in the distance, but our miracle is right in front of us. Revelation says, here I am. I stand at the door and knock. And if anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person and they with me. Do me a favor, look at your neighbor and tell them, stop looking all around. Just open up the door. Stop looking all around. Just open up the door. We need to stop looking here, there, and everywhere. All we got to do is open we need to understand something. In this life, there will be trials and tribulations. Sometimes you want to face hell because of you. But sometimes you're going to face hell because you follow the Lord. So when you face hell in your life, stop looking to Lottie, and Dottie, and everybody. But learn how to get down on your knees. Say, Father, I stretch my hands to thee. No other. Let me paint this picture so I can take my seat. In this fifth chapter of Mark, we find Jesus dealing with a number of requests. We find him dealing with a man who had been wracked with demons, so much so that he didn't sleep at home anymore. But the word says that this man that was wrapped with demons was so bad off that nobody could tame him that he slept amongst the tombs. Says that when they would chain him, he'd figure out how to get out of the chain. 
when they tried to talk to him, he wouldn't listen to him. This man had lost his mind. Some would say he was crazy. But the word says that this man heard Jesus coming off in the distance. And it said that he ran to Jesus and, and lay prostrate before the Savior and said, Lord, heal me. And it says that Jesus started to talk to his demons, Brother Brown. And it says that when he started to talk to the demons, the demons begged him, said, Lord, don't cast us out of this community, but find some place in the distance to put us. And the word says that he told the demons, Legion, come on out of him. There's some hogs that are over on the other side of the hill. And he put the demons in the hogs. And the hogs lost their minds and went headlong into the water and drowned. Can I stop right there for a second? Some of y'all are dealing with some demons in your life that you don't have the power to overcome. But let me tell you something. When human strength fails, you gotta go to the one that cured the water. That this man, when he was healed of his demons, was so happy that he wanted to become one of those that followed Jesus. And the word says he ran to him and said, I want to go with you. And, and Jesus looked at him and said, no, 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 I don't want you to go with me. He said, what I want you to do is I want you to just take some time. Go back to your friends and go back to your family. They remember how crazy you were, don't they? They remember how sick you were, don't they? He said, I want you to go back to them and tell them what the Lord has done in your life. Some of us sitting here today have some crazy days. Some of us sitting here today have some unstable days. But we ought to have the strength and the conviction to go back and tell family and friends I once was lost. Oh, some of y'all didn't hear too quiet for me this morning. Some of y'all ain't been through nothing. But here's what I know. I know some of y'all have had some crazy days in your life. But when the world looks at you now and sees you pressing your way to church, when the world looks at you now and sees you pressing your way to Bible study, if you don't say nothing, your actions say everything about what God can do. Jesus crossed back over from healing that man. But here's the point I want you to remember before I go there. The word says that the man didn't just obey Jesus and go tell one city. But it says that he went back and witnessed to ten cities about how good the Lord had been in his life. I want you to hold that for the end of my message. He went back and witnessed to ten cities. But now as he comes back on the other side of the river, He's confronted by Jairus, the leader of the synagogue. How many of you in here have children? Come on, how many of you have children? Jairus was in a terrible condition because his daughter, 12 years old, was so sick that she was about to die. Can you imagine right now being in a situation with your child, the one that you love so much, when they're about to die, you'll do almost anything to find a solution for that child. Am I right about that? Come on, somebody, and witness with me in here. When your child is locked up in prison, even though you know that they were wrong, you'll do anything that you can do to save that child from suffering. You'll have somebody in the building today that's going to let us children. Uh, sometimes you want to give up, but uh, uh, stand in the gap for your children, uh, because God will. Yes, 
channel spread to Jesus. This leader and fell prostrate before and said, Lord, I need you right now. I need you to make a way for me out of nowhere. For my daughter is about to die. And Jesus heard the cry of Jairus. How many of you know that when you call on him, Jesus will hear your cry? How many of you know that when you reach out to him, he will hear your cry? You can reach out to mama, and mama may not hear. You can reach out to daddy, and daddy may not hear. But when you call And Jesus was on his way with Jairus to go see about his door. But the Lord said that they heard about what Jesus was doing. Wait a second, I'm moving too fast. Can I stop right there for a second? Listen to me. The world may give you titles. The world may give you status. The world may give you prestige. But when you show up looking for a miracle, when you show up in your bed trouble, you got to shake off those titles. Yes. <laughs> 
Oh, 